Let's take a moment to look at the query processing architecture to see where aggregations fit into the process. We start with a client application executing a query. This could be a developer using Bids or Management Studio, or a user with Excel or Performance Point or some other Cube browser. The request is sent to the Analysis Services server, where the query processor determines what type of query it is – MDX for cubes or DMX for data mining – and it validates the syntax. If it passes, the next step is to determine what's on rows and what's on columns. And what's not shown here is a request to the storage engine to get the dimension data. Setting up the axes then gives Analysis Services what it needs to get the tuple values or the cell values from the cube. So a request goes to the calculation engine, which breaks down the request into one or more subcubes, and each subcube is a request to the storage engine to get data. The storage engine relies on the structure of dimension data, especially hierarchies and attribute relationships, to determine how to roll up fact-level data into the attributes requested in the query. But then it needs to decide where to get the data from. It looks first in the storage engine cache. If another user has requested the same data, then it exists in the storage engine cache, and the storage engine returns what it has. And that's the fastest possible operation. Even if the data is at a lower granularity, it's still useful. For example, if a previous query requested sales by quarter, and the current query is for sales by year, Analysis Services knows that it can easily add up each quarter to get the year values. If the data is not in the storage cache, then the next place to look is in the aggregations. This is the next best place for analysis services to retrieve data because it can be very fast. But if the data is not there, it has no choice but to get the fact data, which can be a slower operation when we have millions and millions of rows. Regardless of where the data came from, the storage engine returns the data to the formula engine, which is responsible for packaging it all up and adding in any calculations required, and returning the results to the requesting application.